Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go again, boys and girls. The start of a new Premier League season and another Premier League predictions video. That time of year again when I will make this video now and come May, or I presume we won't have another pandemic, so hopefully the season does finish in May this time. I'll look back on this video and think, Aaron, what on earth were you thinking? Now, I will say this, right, before we begin. This season's predictions are, you know, we can give ourselves a little bit of leeway here. The transfer window still hasn't closed yet, and it's still not due to close until October 5th, whereas last season it actually closed before the season began. So all transfers were confirmed and all that, making my you know, predictions from last season look even more stupid. But this time around, there is still an opportunity for teams to go out and sign players within the next month. So, I'm going to give myself a little bit of leeway here. But without further ado, let's get into the predictions. In 20th position then, bottom of the pile. Who do I think is going to finish bottom last? I have gone for Fulham. Newly promoted side, obviously came up through the playoffs. So, you know... Logic would tell you they are the weakest of the promoted sides. They have a relatively young manager in Scott Parker who has, you know, a lot of experience when it comes to playing in the top flight, but um, only managed for like half a season or a bit more than that And uh, the last time Fulham were in the Premier League after they sacked Claudio Ranieri. So I don't think he's really the sufficient managerial experience to keep Fulham in the top flight. But apart from that, their recruitment hasn't been particularly good. The three signings they've made have been Anthony Robinson from Wigan and Mario Lamina and Harrison Reed, both from Southampton. So it's not been great. It doesn't bode well. Bottom for Fulham. 19th then is a team that I predicted to get relegated last season and they didn't. It was Brighton. The season just gone kind of changed my mind on Graham Potter. I wasn't sure if he had the credentials to keep Brighton in the league. And I do think he is a very good, young, talented manager who's only going to get better as time goes on. And he really had, you know, that Brighton side... Quite, you know, compact, very good defensively, tough to break down. But overall, if I look at their squad, I don't think they have a strong enough you know, depth in squad to keep themselves in the Premier League. Obviously, they have Ben White coming back from his loan at Leeds. And they do have, you know, potential for goals going forward in Neil Maupai and Aaron Connolly. But I just think overall, when you look at the teams around them, I don't think Brighton's squad is strong enough to keep them in the top flight. 18th then and finishing off the relegation zone is Aston Villa. Now, obviously, Aston Villa survived by the absolute skin of their teeth at the end of last season and, you know, were very lucky to stay up. A lot of things went their way, if you think back to that uh, goal line technology mess up in uh, Sheffield United game. And obviously, other results would have went their way towards the end of last season as well. But I genuinely think overall, I think the spine of this Villa team needs to be improved. And obviously, as I said at the start of the video, there is still time for them to go out and make a change. Their goalkeeping situation is not great at the minute with uh, Pepe Reina returning from his loan. Uh, then realistically, Tom Heaton is still expected to be out for a couple of months more. And apart from that, then there's Orjan Nealand who... I think I've mentioned him once or twice on the channel. Don't think he's up to it in the top flight. They're quite leaky defensively. They don't score enough goals. And, you know, there was a lot of patchy form and injuries to the likes of Wesley and Samata last season. Now, they have only today just signed Ollie Watkins from Brentford for, I believe, £28 million, which is a lot of money for... Someone who obviously did extremely well in the championship last season and has been impressing over the last few seasons. But it's a massive price tag for him to try and live up to in the Premier League. It's going to be interesting to see how he fires. But they've definitely gone out and signed a striker that they need. I just think the £28 million is a big risk on Ollie Watkins. But apart from their you know, forward positions, there is a lot of other areas where Villa need to improve on, in my opinion. 17th then and just about surviving in the Premier League for 2020-2021 is West Ham United. There seems to be an awful lot of unrest at uh, West Ham at the minute. Most notably, Mark Noble going after the board for uh, the you know selling of Grady Diangana to West Brom. Obviously, a highly thought of youngster who broke through with West Brom in the Championship last season. I feel like that unrest off the pitch could translate and contribute to their performances on the pitch. And I think it's going to be a, a rocky, tough season for West Ham. I'm not sure if David Moyes is going to survive the whole season. I think they will be okay. I think they will have enough experience to keep themselves up. 16th then, I've gone for West Brom. Now, obviously newly promoted as well. Pushed Leeds all the way in the championship title race last season. And it's going to be a very, very interesting season uh, for West Brom to see how they cope with uh, life back in the big time. Plenty of Premier League experience from the manager in Slavin Bilic, the likes of Charlie Austin, Kieran Gibbs, uh, Jake Livermore, Matt Phillips. You know, there's a lot of 
you know, past Premier League experience there. And it'll be interesting to see how they can pass on that experience to the younger players who, like Dean Ghana, who I already mentioned, with all the talk that's been going on about him recently, I'm very intrigued to see how he translates his form from the Championship into the Premier League. 15th, Crystal Palace. Palace had one of the worst records in the Premier League following the restart. Their biggest issue last season, Crystal Palace, putting the ball in the back of the net. And certainly we've seen that evidently um, after the restart. But they have just signed um, England under-21 international Ebrechi Eze. I hope I haven't butchered that name. From QPR for 19.5 million. Again, a lot of money for a championship player. It's He's Palace's most expensive player since 2017. And, you know, it's raised the hopes a little bit among fans. But it's going to be interesting to see how he performs. But I think Palace will be alright. I think they'll be safe enough. Similar to West Ham, I wouldn't be surprised to see Hodgson go midway through the season as well. 14th then, I've gone for Leeds United. Obviously a massive club. I remember watching their game against Arsenal in the FA Cup back in, I think it was around December, January time. I'm thinking they really don't look out of place here. And it was a pretty strong Arsenal team they had out. They have an incredibly talented tactician in Marcelo Bielsa at the wheel. And I'll be intrigued to see how the players adapt their you know high-pressing, in-your-face style of play to the Premier League. It's going to be very, very difficult for them I think sustain that week in week out against you know the higher quality opposition of the Premier League but as I said already I'm very intrigued to see how they do that but I do think they're going to survive comfortably enough. 13th then I've gone for Burnley and I'm not too sure what it is about Sean Dyche and Burnley but they just always seem to have enough to stay in the Premier League. They're not incredibly blessed when it comes to talent within the squad or in terms of budget to improve on the talent within the squad. But what they do have and what they have had for many years now is a group of players who are willing to fight for the cause, know the manager's game plan, know his philosophy and know how to, you know, execute it season in, season out. I think they're going to do the exact same this year. 12th, Sheffield United. Now I, along with many others, criminally underrated Sheffield United at the beginning of last season, even predicting them to finish rock bottom of the Premier League with a bit of a whimper, to be honest. What Chris Wilder managed to achieve with that group of players last season was just absolutely incredible. I have nothing but praise and admiration for him and his squad. I mean, there was even a point where they looked well on for Champions League football, which is absolutely baffling to be quite honest. If I'm being perfectly honest, I don't think they're going to be anywhere near as good this season as they were last season, but I still expect them to survive fairly comfortably. A lot of that down to them, you know, losing possibly their best player last season in Dean Henderson. He's gone back from his loan, back to Manchester United, and replacing him with, you know, Aaron Ramsdale. I think they're going to be a lot more, you know, leaky defensively. They're going to lose a lot more goals. But I think a solid mid-table finish for Sheffield United. 11th, Southampton. Another team you boy criminally underrated last season was Southampton. And, you know, they looked doomed, didn't they, after their 9-0 battering at home uh, to Leicester. But somehow they managed to turn their season around and get a decent, a very decent 11th place finish. And I think that's what they're going to do again this season. You know, I think Hasselhoodle has that team well marshaled. You know, they're well balanced, hard working. And it's incredible that he's managed to turn it around in the way he did. In terms of signing for them this summer, they signed Mohamed Salisu from Real Valladolid and Kyle walker Peterson Spurs, adding that bit of you know pace and experience to the defence. And if Danny Ings can keep them scoring goals and attack, Southampton will be fine this season. 10th, Newcastle United. Another team that I expected to get relegated last season. I was incredibly shocked at how well Newcastle did last season, considering they just lost Rafa Benitez in the summer. And you know, it might not be Kylian Mbappe or Cristiano Ronaldo walking through the doors of St. James's Park this summer following the uh, fall-through of their potential takeover, but with, you know, with what they have, Newcastle have bought incredibly well this summer. They've signed Callum Wilson and Ryan Fraser from Bournemouth, the highly rated Jamal Lewis from Norwich, beating Liverpool to his signature, and uh, they've also signed... Um, Jeff Hendrick. I think they are going to finish higher than they did last season. Tenth for me. Ninth, I've gone for Everton. And if this isn't the season that Everton really threatened to break into the top six, I don't know when that season is going to be. With a manager as experienced as Ancelotti, coupled with the signings such as Alan, Abdullah Decore, and James fucking Rodriguez, surely, surely Everton are going to be close. However, I do still believe they have defensive frailties and I think they need to really invest in their defence before the end of the transfer window. And to be honest, if they don't, I think that could be their downfall. But if the new signings do hit the ground running, which they're expected to do, and Everton make go to some park of fortress, who knows where they could go. Eighth, I've gone for Leicester City. I really don't think Leicester are going to fly as high as they did last term. They have a great team and they have the potential to get even better, but I still think they need to really invest in the transfer market. They've been pretty quiet so far. 
And with others improving around them, they could only go backwards, really. They had a serious decline in the second half of the season, winning only four of their last 17 Premier League games, throwing away a really great opportunity to get into the top four and be playing Champions League football this term. The fact that they fell off was down to a lack of squad depth and maybe just a lack of mental strength when it mattered the most. When Leicester are at their best, they're absolutely brilliant to watch, but I do think they need to make some changes to that squad before the end of the transfer window. And if they do that, who knows, they could challenge the top four or top six once again, but for me, I can't see them finishing any higher than 8th with the squad they currently have because there's a lot of reliance on Jamie Vardy and they just need more depth in that squad for when the going gets tough towards the end of the season. 7th, I've gone for Wolves. Wolves, like Leicester, lacked any sort of really, you know, consistent momentum towards the end of the season. Again, could be down to, you know, a lack of depth within the squad, but if they do finish 7th, as I've predicted them to, for the third consecutive season, that would be a welcome finish, I'm sure for uh, the Wolves fans, but I do think there is still a lot of work to be done on that squad. They aren't in Europe this season, and you know, that could be a blessing in disguise, and it could give them a chance to really have more of a go at the league, and maybe even a cup run. However, there seems to be concern still over the likes of, you know, Raul Jimenez and Adam Traore possibly getting poached by some of Europe's top clubs, and there's still growing concerns over Nuno's contract, which is obviously up at the end of the season, and, you know, still no sign of a new deal looking like it's going to be in place. But I do think they will finish 7th again. Here we go then, boys and girls. On to the top 6. 6th, I've gone for Tottenham Hotspur. Burr scraped uh, Europa League football with a one-all draw with uh, Crystal Palace, coupled with Chelsea's win over Wolves on the final day of last season. And I do still think it's very much a transitional period for Spurs. I do think Jose Mourinho is still needs time to properly put his stamp down and his style of football onto this team. I think the biggest priority for Spurs this season will obviously be to give Champions League football a really good go, but I think more than anything, they need to win a trophy. It's been so long, I think it's like 12, 13 years since they've won a trophy. So, I mean, even if it is just the Carabao Cup or even having a really good go in the Europa League, a trophy is an absolute must, I do feel, for Spurs this season. And for Mourinho, someone who really does specialise in the art of winning trophies. I think the signings of Matt Doherty and Pierre-Emil Hoiberg are good and will contribute well to the squad, but I still do think they need two or three more reinforcements elsewhere around the park if they are to really, you know, threaten the top four. Also, a fully fit Harry Kane for the whole season will be, you know, definitely going on well for them as well. Fifth, I have gone for Arsenal. Despite having one of their worst seasons in the club's history last year, there's still a weird kind of positive vibe going around Arsenal at the minute. They finished last season quite strong, obviously winning the FA Cup, beating City and Chelsea along the way, and obviously they just won the Community Shield as well against Liverpool two weeks ago, so you know, there's positive vibes going into the new season. Arteta seems to have made them a lot harder to beat than they were under Unai Emery, they've become quite good at soaking up pressure from big teams and hitting those teams on the counter-attack with the pace in the likes of Bukayo Saka, Nicola Pepe and of course um, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang as well. And obviously keeping Aubameyang at the club is probably the best thing Arsenal have done this summer. And I do believe that style of play will claim them a few very big scalps as the season goes on, but I think ultimately they need to invest more in their defence if they're to really challenge the top teams. And as I said, as you know, it's the same for every team, there is still time for them to do that before the end of the window. There's still just under a month to go until the transfer window closes, so they could do that. Fourth, I've gone for Manchester United. United were definitely one of, if not the form team in the Premier League following Project Restart, and I do think they will carry that form into the beginning of the new season. I think Donny van de Beek is going to be a really good signing for them in the middle of the park, adding to the class that Bruno Fernandes brought into the team for the second half of the season and it very much needed that class. If they can keep their front three of Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial and Mason Greenwood fit and firing, Man United are going to be a real force to be reckoned with and they're going to cause a lot of problems for teams this season. The battle for the number one goalkeeping spot between De Gea and Henderson is going to be very intriguing too but I don't see United finishing or really competing um, for anything other than fourth. Third, I've gone for my beloved Chelsea FC. As a Chelsea fan, I very much expect us to push uh, Liverpool and City a lot further than we have done over the lo last couple of seasons with the signings we've brought in. As I've mentioned so many times, Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, Ben Chilwell, Thiago Silva and now Kai Havertz as well. If those signings can gel straight away, Chelsea should be electrifying to watch and should be very hard bet, I'd imagine, as well. As I said, we still need a goalkeeper and there's still talks of a deal for Eduard Mendy happening before the end of the transfer window. And as I've said already, lads, there is still a lot of time for that deal to go through. So fingers crossed that happens, but 
this is the most excited I've been for a Chelsea team at the beginning of a season than I've been for a long, long time. Wrapping it up then, obviously when I say second, first is going to be revealed as well. Who do I think is going to win the Premier League? I'm going to go for Manchester City. I said it last season, I thought City were going to win last season, but Liverpool obviously smoked everyone. I just really don't think Liverpool are going to be able to replicate what they did last season this time around. Their form wasn't exactly sparkling following the restart, and I guess you could put that down to them, you know, winning the league fairly soon after the restart. Obviously, the Bet Palace and the next game, Chelsea beat City to confirm uh, Liverpool's uh, title. But, you know, on top of that, they've missed out on, like, key transfers like obviously Timo Werner is one of them and it could get even worse if they don't pay the 30 million for Thiago Alcantara now I mean surely if you're Liverpool FC one of the most famous clubs in English football 30 million should just be absolute pocket change but they really look like they want to play a hard ball with this when Aston Villa have just spent 28 million on Ollie Watkins like do you know what I mean there's levels to this now look they didn't sign anyone last summer and they still won the league by as much as they did but I still I just feel like their rivals have strengthened a lot and you know it's not going to be that easy for Liverpool this time around speaking of their rivals their main ones being Manchester City who I believe will pick up yet another Premier League title I think City and in particular Pep have a lot to prove um this season after what was a pretty lackluster season I would say overall for Manchester City last season they played some beautiful football at times but when you look back on it and just see you know the Carabao Cup as the only trophy they won you know finishing 20 odd points behind Liverpool and being knocked out of the Champions League quarterfinals by fucking Lyon you know, it doesn't bode well for City and for Pep, who came under a lot of criticism, especially after City got knocked out by Leo. The signings of Nathan Ake and Ferran Torres has certainly strengthened that City squad even further, and I think if they do manage to land their biggest target, which is Khalidou Koulibaly, um, they'll be very hard stopped in England, but not only that, but in Europe as well, I do feel. So yes, boys and girls, those are my predictions for the 2020-2021 season. I'm very much looking forward to it. Let me know if you are too in the comment section down below. Let me know your predictions for the season in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new around here. And I will catch you later. But when we